Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from Conoman at YouTube with a review and build of the Airfix Type 97 Chiha medium tank from the Second World War. This fairly small Imperial Japanese armor, originally released in 1974 from the English company Airfix, is as faithful as it's going to get to that vintage and apparently not that bad of a kit to put together keep in mind for 176 scale it is going to be extremely tiny it is an entry level model kit at an extremely cheap seven dollars within Australia there are a few cutbacks in the layout of the sprue and whatnot so don't expect all the bells and whistles but it's definitely a fun build if you're more interested in an accurate replica for competition modeling or whatnot, you probably want to have a look at the more upmarket Dragon line, which is around the $20 mark for the same kit, slightly bigger, at 172nd scale. The box contains all the sprues, uh, water slide decal sheets, and paper instructions. From experience, the decals are a bit fragile and fiddly, but definitely works out. The instructions are informative, gives you an accurate colour guide with the humble line of paints, but you're probably best off doing your own research and lining up your own paints for a more accurate scheme. And the instructions are very clear and precise. Layout of all the parts, because the sprues are not enclosed in a frame, a little care is definitely required. And for a 1974 cleanup job and re release, they've definitely done a good job after seeing older Airfix kits as they are fairly rough. Be careful that some of the very thin styrene railing pieces can break and is extremely fragile, though repairable. Another shout out to the instructions, I do absolutely love how they blow up the paper to a very large A4 piece and make all the imaging as big as humanly possible. I think Airfix is counting that a lot of the kits are being bought by the elder generation trying to recapture what they used to play and build when they were children, as well as kids can easily follow this too. When working with small scale armour, the first instructions normally works with the side underparts of the tank and putting all the shockers, suspension and wheels. At first this can look uh, quite intimidating but not too hard, just carefully lining up and counting all the different numbers of the wheels and putting them together. If you break up this into smaller different stages like so, it's uh, quite easy. I haven't come to any problems at this point and cleaning nubs and flash has been pretty easy. With steps 1 and 2 being identical on each side of the tank, 3 and 4 is a little more trickier even though it looks simple. There's a little bit of extra flash and imperfections to clean up but still pretty good at uh, this level entry grade kit. Uh, when you are putting the body together, be very careful and let each bit of glue dry in each place before you add another section to avoid uh, the shape of the uh, hull being distorted. You'll also find that some putty may be required in filling small gaps. The last part was the most difficult, yet still fairly easy. You're assembling the turret and it's uh, pretty bad for seam lines. They definitely need to be filled in with putty. The top railing is a bit tricky to glue down as it breaks down in some places but patience always resolves that. Uh, of course allow a few hours for the putty to dry before you sand back. And in the end you're adding detail to the hull of the tank such as uh, gun cannons, uh, smokestacks and whatnot. Very very simple. I'm leaving the tank tracks until after I've painted the kit for easy access. To very quickly summarize the construction process, for its age 
amazing how it comes together, lack of imperfections and gaps, very very easy to build and have at a nice standard. I've mounted the two pieces on skewers with alligator kit clips but blue tack can also do the trick one at the bottom base of the turret and in the hull just in the hole where the turret butt clicks in i hit it with tamir primer within the rattle can and i'm ready for painting the humbrol color guide does come pretty close though i do happen to have my hands on the mr hobby early and late war japanese set it is a bit darker, so I can actually recommend the humble version to be perfectly fine. Maybe just a touch of smoke on it. The first step, I hit the light brown with the airbrush over all the pieces. If you were to hand paint, it would be a lot more appropriate with the humble enamels, as thinning it and hand painting it would be a lot easier than lacquer as it dries quicker. Also the Mr. Hobby sets seem to be limited and not re-released. Because the camouflage is hard edge and not soft edge, masking would be definitely a pain. So I hand painted the green part by thinning with uh, lacquer thinner and retardant. The next day I painted the brown part all following the box art. If you're interested in how I hand paint with either lacquer or enamel, there are tutorials on this channel that will teach you so. The paint set doesn't quite cover the less common colours such as black, copper and whatnot, but the rest is quite easy to replicate with basic paints or the white cream streak by mixing my own as I don't need a lot. I use this range including the Citadel wash to continue. The copper brass bits were hand painted with the Tamir enamel copper. The white streaks which I used the box art over the painting guide was hand I mixed using Tamir and Gunzi white and cream slash wood colour. The wheel rims and the top of the barrels of the guns were painted with gloss black. Then I used Citadel acrylic ink to sludge, sludge wash the entire kit with black. The kit is then remounted, hit with clear gloss, after a day or so drying, deckled, sealed with gloss again, and matted with clear matte varnish, ready for weathering. While all that's happening, I'm working with the tank tracks. To save time, I sprayed them with a black gloss primer, though normal primer and then a black base coat would also do. And once dried, dry brushed iron, which is a new colour by Tamiya, to get a metallic finish. It was washed and then added to the kit. After I gave this kit a few days to fully cure and harden the paintwork and weathered the entire thing using MIG production pigments and a fixative, just a, a little mud colour around the wheels and under the sides and some top light dust on top to bring out a little extra definition. You can replicate this technique easily with dry brushing. And here we go, a completely finished painted and, in my opinion, not too bad looking Japanese tank. I found the builds to be fairly simple for such a cheap kit, yet the detail is quite nice. We've got rivets and grills and bits and pieces all over the place. The only uh, complaint is, is the railing on top of the turret is a bit fat, but there's not much you can do in styrene. Like I said, if there's something you'd like it better, uh, the Dragon Kits has a, all sorts of photo etching resin for a more skinny, realistic look. But I'm extremely happy. The markings do seem a tad weird with the Thunderbolts. I thought you would have little Japanese flags and uh, Chinese characters all over the place, but seems this scheme isn't so. 
I sort of have doubts that if this is an actual scheme that was fielded in the real war or just something that Airfix may have invented. The size is also a factor. It is absolutely tiny, but I'm fairly happy with the results and I definitely recommend this kit. Just a quick comparison with the last uh, small scale airfix kit I made last year, the Tiger 1 in HO scale, I believe it's 83 or 87th scale. The Hachi is uh, a lot more involved and there's more going for it in detail and colour scheme but I think I've improved a little bit but the Tiger 1 which is an original English made one was a lot rougher. Looking at those funny looking tank tracks it's uh, kind of cool. And a very quick comparison with the box art and my finished kit. I definitely feel I've got the markings accurate. The weathering's a bit different, but hey, uh, copying a uh, pastel box art can be tricky. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I hope you liked your review. Again, I recommend the new and recently re released. Airfix armor are all a lot of fun. I'll catch you guys next time.